one second. Okay, the link didn't work, so I just put um, I put the link to my website, and if you scroll down to item 18, you'll see Worksheet 5 and Worksheet 5 Key. Okay, so starting with um, number one, I find where the instantaneous rate of change is equivalent to the average rate of change. This is an application of mean value theorem. You see average rate of change, that's F of B minus F of A over B minus A. And then instantaneous rate of change, that's your F prime. So uh, that's, we can go ahead and write that, state that theorem, mean value theorem. And then we have two conditions associated with it, continuity and differentiability. We know that both will pass since we're dealing with a polynomial. Uh, continuity is with a set of brackets. Differentiability is with a set of parentheses. So one thing at a time, let's go ahead and gather our order pairs. And from our order pairs, we can build our slope. So let's find y of 1. Let's find y of 6. So y of 1 and y of 6, that gives us order pairs of 1, 7, and 6, 2. Find the slope between the endpoints. Change in y over change in x. 7 minus 2 over 1 minus 6. 5 over negative 5. So that's our slope of negative 1. We have 1 half of mean value theorem accounted for. We know that we're trying to find that guaranteed slope of negative one somewhere along this curve. Now we can move on to our derivative function. So y prime equals 2x minus 8. We have the two pieces that we need. We have the slope that we're targeting. We have the derivative function that's going to help us find that location. And that negative one goes in for our slope variable. Solve for x. Our C value should land between our endpoints, and they and it does. So we have the location on the curve where the curve is experiencing that exact slope of negative one. Any questions? Right, try number two. Number two is the same process, just a different function.
For for Rolls theorem, mm -hmm. you're finding where slope equals zero, right? Where like well, both of them equal zero. Yeah. And for MDT, you're um you're finding where the slopes just equal each other on the Good morning, Milton Staff. Can all the I on uh, uh, teachers please report to room 3210 for your meeting? All IRR teachers, please report to 3210. Thank you. <laughs> The same process. Um, it's just that mean value theorem, that's going to end up giving you a zero. Yeah. But with mean value theorem, that, sorry, with rules theorem, it has to be, this has to equal to zero. Mm -hmm. With rule, with mean value theorem, it can be zero or it could be other numbers. Okay. And then for, for rules theorem, you just have to do a uh, while. You just have to do that. That's is continuous, not differentiable. It's both. Oh, you have to you have to say both. Mm -hmm. right. What's the one that only has one condition? Oh, it's EBT. Yeah, EBT. Yeah, both mean value theorem and rolls. They both involve information about slope. We're trying to guarantee slope. So because of that, um, both mean and value mean value theorem and rolls theorem have both conditions because they're so similar. Um, it makes sense that they have the same conditions. Mm -hmm. what's, essentially. What's EBT again? EBT is finding absolute max, absolute min, where you find the critical points mm. and then you test and you plug the critical points and endpoints into the original function, compare the y values. Highest y value is absolute max, lowest is absolute min. Okay, so number two, uh, we find our order pairs. One negative one zero and seven negative four. We find the slope between the endpoints. Change in y over change in x, we end up with the slope of negative one half. So we have the average rate of change portion of our mean value theorem. Let's move on to our derivative. Our derivative requires a little bit of chain rule here. Outside derivative, that's inside derivative. Okay, so bring down the two thirds, subtract one from the exponent. So outside derivative is negative two thirds parentheses, the negative one third times the inside derivative, x plus one becomes one. We have our slow formula. We have the slope that we're trying to target. So we can plug negative one half into the y prime variable, and then we can try to solve for x. Here I cross multiplied. Negative four equals negative three times x plus one to the one third. Now I'm just trying to figure out how can I get x by itself. So divide both sides by negative three, cube both sides, subtract one from both sides, use our calculator. I guess c is around 1.37 which is safely between our interval.
Okay, any questions with mean value theorem? Uh, it's pretty much the exact same process as uh, Rolle's theorem, but again, Rolle's theorem, uh, these y values will end up being the same number, which will cause this numerator to be zero and your slope will end up being zero. But mean value theorem, your slope can be any number, including zero, but Rolle's theorem has to be a slope of zero. Okay, next up. When you have like two fractions on each side, yeah, and then like the equal sign between you, you can just cross multiply. Yeah, mm -hmm. if I have A over B equals C over D, I can always just cross multiply. Okay. All right, number three, find the absolute maximum, absolute minimum value. This is extreme value theorem. So extreme value theorem uh, has only one condition. It just needs continuity between the endpoints. So our function is definitely continuous since we're dealing with a polynomial. Okay. Some students want to do a sign line. We don't do sign lines for this. Sign lines will be if we were trying to find relative max, relative min. Here, we're just going to find f prime, find the critical points, and then from there, go ahead and start plugging into the function. We're not going to do any sign lines for extreme value theorem. So from f prime, set equal to zero. Solve for x. Find your critical points. But what do we have to be careful about when it comes to critical points? Yeah, it needs to be between the intervals. So anything outside the interval, we don't want to keep. So in this case, we're going to end up with x equals negative 2 and x equals 2. Negative 2 is clearly outside the interval. It is not part of our problem. So we're only going to test 2, 0, and 4 endpoints and critical points, and they all go back into the original function. Highest y value is your absolute max. Lowest y value is your absolute min. And we only care about identifying the y value, not order pairs and not the x value.
All right, page two, another extreme value theorem problem. Uh, the function is continuous, so that's all we need to establish. Find f prime. Now here, when you have um, split fractions, it's best to get a common denominator because we're, we're going to need to find critical points from both the numerator and denominator after we clean this up. So let's find common denominator here. So really, that 2 is over 1. And my common denominator is going to be x to the 1 third, since that's the the more complicated one. <laughs> balance each fraction. The first term doesn't need any balancing. The second, it needs an x to the one third. So here's my f prime. Now we can set both the numerator and the denominator equal to zero. Confirm that our critical points are valid. And then we test endpoints and critical points. Oops, sorry, I, I left out the two here. So F prime should be two minus two X to the one third, all over X to the one third. Critical points can come from both the numerator and the, and the denominator. So saying the numerator equal to zero, I'll get x equals one. Saying the denominator equal to zero, I get x equals zero. One is duplicate of an endpoint, so I was going to test one anyways. Zero does fall between negative one and one, so we're going to end up testing three points. Two endpoints and one additional critical point. Uh, I divided both sides by two. So I get x to the one third equals one, and I cube both sides. Cube, if I cube one, I still get one. After I test my endpoints, I'm looking at my y values. Highest y value is my absolute max. Lowest is my absolute min. Uh, find relative max by using second derivative test. So second derivative test, you're going to find f prime. Find your critical points. You're going to start off like the first derivative test. You're going to find your f prime, find your critical points, but you're not going to do a sign line. You're going to take those critical points from f prime, insert into f double prime, and look to see what number you get. So set h prime equal to zero, solve for x. I get zero and eight thirds. Normally, um, you would do a sign line, which would get you the same result, but we're going through the second derivative test here. So we're going to plug zero and eight thirds into f double prime and use that information to confirm or to uh, conclude what relative max and relative min we're experiencing.
So zero goes in for F double prime. Let's go ahead and find F double prime first or H double prime first, sorry. So zero plugs in for H double prime, I get a positive number. So that eight indicates that I have concave up. So concave up has a certain shape to it. And if you look at how concave up is shaped, um, you see that the only place there where there's a slow zero is at a relative minimum. Eight thirds is my other candidate. Plug eight thirds into the second derivative, I get a negative value. A negative value means concave down, concave down is, will look like this, which is a relative max. I think some students still have a little bit of trouble like, trying to figure out, like, you know, why doesn't that eight tell me that it's a high point and therefore a, uh, uh, I think this, but the association is that we want to still connect that with a relative max is positive. Of it. So here's another way to think about this. Second derivative can also be thought of as quote unquote acceleration, right? If you think about acceleration, acceleration is where your slope is becoming more positive. So if my slope is becoming more positive, if my velocity is becoming more positive, then you look at all these values here, neg slope of negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three. All this is experiencing a positive acceleration because my velocity and my slope is moving towards a positive value. Meanwhile, the negative eight, you can think of it as quote unquote negative acceleration, where your, um, your velocity or your slope is moving in negative direction. So slope three, slope two, slope one, zero, negative one, negative two, negative three. That's going to end up looking like this, which means we're staring at a relative max. Number eight is similar, uh, but it's just using uh, order pairs and uh, values at specific points or values at specific for a specific derivative at a certain point. So f of five, f prime of five, f double prime of five are given. So there's a point with a slope zero and concave down. So if I merge all that information into the same point, the only thing I'm staring at is a relative back. So are we supposed to try it as taking up zone? It helps because you know that that point is here. You know this point is experiencing a slope zero, and it's part of a concave down graph. So if you can if you can take all this and draw it, I think it convinces you that you're staring at a relative max, not a relative min. But you don't have to draw it. So you so the answer would just be relative max of five. Yeah. yeah. But what if f double prime of five was equal to like 27? Then it would be relative then. Because that's concave up, right? That's greater than zero. Concave up looks like this. I must be looking at relative then. So are we really just looking at the point and 
whether um, that double times positive or negative. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So, I mean, this also helps because we know that it's not a random point on the concave down graph. It must be talking about that specific point or this specific point because these are the only points experiencing a slope zero on the curves. But will it always have the like the same x log? It has to, yeah. Otherwise, um, if I have f of five equals three, f prime of six equals zero, f double prime of seven equals twenty-three, I have no idea what's going on. I mean, there's the order pair here. There's a slope at a different point. There's the cavity at a different point. Uh, it has to all be talking about the same point in order for me to make this conclusion about that point. Okay, I'll stop here and uh, we'll pick up with the rest of this review tomorrow morning. Uh, you're free to work on it on your own to see how, how much you can do this. Today in class, we'll We'll do the morning review in the original package. And I'll save this for morning review sessions.